Cisco VPN, Firepower Threat Defense and Microsoft. Microsoft Azure AD and MFA. So we're in Azure Active Directory. We're gonna create an application for AnyConnect. So we'll go ahead and search for AnyConnect. Go ahead and click that AnyConnect application here. And it gives you a good step-by-step -step guide here as well. We're gonna go ahead and do this together. We'll click Create. And we're gonna set up single sign-on. Okay, first thing is the basic SAML configuration. So this is gonna be, all we're gonna do here is change the tunnel group and add our uh, Firepower Threat Defense VPN FQDN. The first URL is gonna be the identifier or entity ID, and the second one will be the reply URL. Now, these are available for you. They'll be in the comment section. All you have to do is modify the FQDN and the tunnel group. We'll go ahead and download the SAML signing certificate. We'll use that to import it into Firepower Threat Defense. Now we're gonna copy off the login URL, the Azure AD identifier, and the logout URL. These will be used in Firepower Threat Defense as part of our SAML configuration. So once we have this captured and we've got this created, let's go to user and groups. We'll go ahead and add user or group. In my case, I'm restricted so I can only create users, uh, but you can use a group here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for a couple of users and add them as entities to this application. We'll go ahead and hit assign. And we've got our three users here. And that's about it. That's all we need to do on the Azure side. So let's jump into Firepower Threat Defense. We're gonna to go to devices and we're gonna to go to certificates. And we're gonna go ahead and hit add. We're gonna select the device here. And there's no certain enrollment, so we're gonna create one. This is gonna be the one that we just downloaded. So we're gonna call this Azure AD IDP. We're gonna say it's manual, CA only, skip the check. And we'll copy over that cert that we just previously downloaded and we'll save. And we'll go ahead and hit add. And done. We see that the CA is available, ID is not, so identity is not, which is expected. That's exactly what we just did. So let's go to object management and we're gonna go to AAA and single sign on server. We're gonna go ahead and hit add. We'll go ahead and give this a name. And then we're gonna grab the Entity ID, we'll copy that over. Those are the three URLs that we copied from Azure AD. We'll do the SSO URL or the login and then the logout URL. I'm gonna come back to base URL. In fact, I forgot to do this, but I'm, I'm gonna show you that as well. We'll grab the identity provider, that certificate we just added. And now we gotta create one for, um, in my case, the VPN. So we'll go ahead, I, I've actually uh, used Let's Encrypt, created the certificate and converted it to uh, the right format here. So PKCS 12 file, and I'm gonna go ahead and import that. You can use a self-signed one if you're doing some testing, but uh, this is a uh, signed certificate um, that's gonna be accepted by your browser. And that's about it. Let's go ahead and hit save. So now we've got our single sign-on server object um, and we can use that as part of our VPN build. A Couple of other things maybe quickly here. Uh, address pools, we've got one already created for remote access VPN. It's just a range of IPs that we're gonna give out the VPN users when they connect. And if we scroll down here to VPN, you can see here group policy. I've also, oh, in fact, I didn't create one yet. Let's go ahead and create a quick um, group policy here. Again, this will be applied to our VPN configuration. 
and we'll give it a name, Azure-AD-GP for group policy. We could add the address pool here as well. If this was different, it, it would make sense to do so. And we'll put a banner here. So when we do connect, we know it's hitting this group policy. Go ahead and hit save. Got a couple of objects now created. And I think we could, let's go back up to that single sign on server and fix that base URL before I forget here. So let's go ahead and copy this, the FQDN for the VPN device. Go ahead and hit save. All right, we've got all the pieces that we need to build out that VPN configuration. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and hit add. And it's a wizard and it walks you through, which is pretty nice. So let's give this a name. Now, the tunnel group has to be the same name as the tunnel group that you gave the application within Azure. If not, it will not work. So the connection profile name is Azure-MFA. That is the application uh, name itself or the tunnel group identified in the application within Azure. We'll grab uh, the SAML uh, authentication method and authentication server is that object that we created. Here we can put the pool. Now we do have it tied to our group policy um, as well and it is the same pool. So we didn't really have to do that but um, if, it's, if there's not something assigned to a group policy, then they'll get this one, part of the connection profile. And we assigned our default group policy here. I've already uploaded the, the image for any connect. We'll go ahead and select it and apply, or hit next, sorry. And we'll just give it a second here. We'll select our outside interface zone here, and then we'll go ahead and grab that certificate that we just imported. Now the quick summary, and it talks about access control policy and your NAT exemption, right? You don't want to be NATing this when you're going internal uh, to, uh, to the VPN. So internal network to the VPN, uh, you don't want NAT to take place. Just reviewing a couple settings here, you can see there's the package I can upload more if I want to. Uh, there's my group policy that's assigned as well. I could in fact edit here without having to go back to objects to, to make that change. We'll go back to connection profile. And let's just, one more thing, let's go back and edit this. And we'll check the alias here. And you can see on alias, you've got Azure-MFA um, there as well. So everything looks good. Let's go ahead and hit save. We'll go to NAT real quick, just to show you that it, it, I'm not NATting here. We're not testing connectivity inside the network anyway, but you've got the inside to outside zone. You've got the inside network to the VPN network, and it's not translated, right? It's the same IP range um, on the NAT or translate side. So that's an, it's, it's a no NAT. On the access control policy, we've got our AnyConnect, so it's outside to inside the VPN network to the inside network. And in this case, it's just a full allow. You might wanna run IPS and some other controls on, on this as well, but, uh, but you get the idea that policy does exist. So let's go to remote access policy here. We can see we've got one out of date target. Let's go ahead and deploy this. So we'll give that some time, it'll deploy. Um, and hopefully everything's working as expected and we'll be able to connect and we'll give it a try. All right, so it's given it some time. Let's go ahead and give this a test. Let's bring up a client here. We'll go ahead and hit connect. So far looks okay. Oh, there we go. So let's go ahead and log in. We'll give uh, the password here. And if you don't have Authenticator, it'll walk you through the process to onboard it. It's actually showing on my phone now. I'll go ahead and hit accept. Stay signed in, sure, done.
This is Azure AD MFA. So that's it. Again, six minute configuration. You get SAML integration. You've done the Azure bit. Everything is complete to make this workable. We even went ahead and showcased the NAT rule in the access control list. So let's go look at a couple of uh, uh, logging um, details here. And first thing is we can see we've got authentication, VPN authentication at the top there, HR1. And we can drill into that specific users and you can see the host history of that user. So IPs that they've had in the past. Let's go to active sessions. We can see that we've got a discovery identity of HR1. Now I do have LDAP integrated with Active Directory on premise as well. I'm going to go ahead and hit disconnect. And if it works, we should see this user disconnect here. And there we go. Disconnect in progress. Now the user might be thinking, well, why? Well, the secure gateway has been terminated by the administrator. Thank you.